Well, the story of this mother orca and her dead calf has made it around the world. And those pictures and that video of her still pushing this calf even more than a week after its death has certainly made it here to Southern California, which is the home of one of the institutions that is most intimately acquainted with killer whale behavior, SeaWorld. It's usually reported in days. Uh, not weeks to months. However, um, in some cases it has gone on uh, much longer and there are reports of animals that are still attending to calves or to other dead conspecifics um, when it's clear that uh, the animal is starting to decompose. Some uh, people have suggested that it's an attempt by, uh, particularly when it's a mother and a calf, that it's an attempt by the mother to revive the calf. There are other cases where uh, females have been seen lifting their calves up onto their bodies to avoid uh, predation or attacks by other species, so it could be trying to protect or revive. Um, in other cases, um, some scientists believe that the uh, animals don't realize that the conspecific is dead. Pam Yoakum is the chief science officer for the Hub Sea World Research Institute here in San Diego. And she says, though we may have a grieving reaction as humans to this story, that the research doesn't definitively show that that's what's going on with this orca mother and her calf. But there are a lot of people grieving this situation for good reason, because there is a lot at stake for the southern resident killer whale. Basically, they're running out of food. They only eat fish, and they love Chinook salmon, which are also disappearing. There's also pollution in the water, and those toxins build up in their fat stores, and when these whales don't have enough to eat, they metabolize their fat, and they release those toxins into their bloodstream and essentially poison themselves. They're also having issues with finding their food because of all the boats around them. That boat noise makes it very difficult for them to echolocate what little food there is left. There are only seven. 75 of the southern resident killer whales left alive in the wild. So every birth and every death means a lot. One of the concerns for uh, females that are guarding their calves or, or carrying them around is that that costs energy. And if she's doing that, she's not feeding. Um, so there's certainly a cost to this behavior. And of course, when you lose a young female in particular, um, that's a real uh, blow to the population. You know, killer whales, the gestation uh, time is about 15 to 18 months. So it's a very long gestation. Station. Um, females usually only have one calf every three to five years. In some cases, it may be as infrequently as every 10 years. So females got a lot invested in that one calf. And so the, the loss is, uh, is really tough. Some are calling this a turning point for the southern resident killer whales. But for those of us who have been telling stories about them or researching them for years, this is just another sad chapter in what could be a really sad book whose last line has yet to be written. But the difference is that this time, the world is is watching us. What will we tell them about what we're willing to do to protect the future of the southern resident killer whales? If you'd like more information on changes you can make today to help them, please visit our website, king5.com. For now in San Diego, I'm Allison Morrow, King 5 News.